Howdy folks, Max Caveman here, bringing you to a showcase of what I use at the Paradox Rift Build and Battle or Pre-Release event that I went to very recently. Uh, let me just start off by saying that I got incredibly lucky with my pulls. Um, I got one of the biggest cards that people were after, and we actually had someone state before the event that if you got this card, you were most likely going to win the event. Sadly, I did not win. I placed 10th overall. Um, I think that was 10 out of 15, including three not in my division. So with this build and battle kit, I ended up getting the Age of Slash deck. Uh, the Age of Slash deck is one of these um, stage 2 um, decks. Basically, if you get Age of Slash out, you don't take damage from these or EXs. I wish that ruling said rule box Pokemon instead of specifying. Because once this card um, gets into a more expanded format, um, that ruling is a bit awkward. Um, I wasn't confident with the Age of Slash, um, especially what I managed to pull, but I did also pull a Altaria EX that I didn't use. So I found it just a touch difficult to, the idea of using the energies for it. I probably should have gone with Altaria instead of the strategy that I went for, but let's have a look at the deck that I actually ran. Okay, so let's actually zoom out a little bit for you. Um, so, right off the bat, the Parasol Lady is a fantastic card that we do get, but here it is. This was the main reason I was considered to be one of the top favorites for winning the event. I managed to get myself an Iron Hands EX. Um, Iron Hands EX does allow you to take an additional prize card when you use the Ant View Very Much attack, uh, it does 120, but the main fallback, well, more drawback, sorry, is the four energy cost, including one Lightning. This deck did not run Lightning energies at all initially, so I took the Age of Slash out for the Lightning energies, and I did go a bit skew on the um, energy counts, but. I also forgot to take out the Jacques, which is completely useless in this deck. I do not run any evolving Pokemon, but the main thing that I was aiming for was actually for the baby Pokemon. Um, I found they were a bit better so for the Pokemon, uh, let's see if I can just quickly rearrange that. Okay. So I had one more Magby. Um, basically, if you declare the attack during your opponent's next turn, if this Pokemon is knocked out, it's, oh, damaged. I think I'm actually misplayed that. Oh, that is annoying. Yeah, I just realized that I let my opponent go through with not taking the damage that they were supposed to. That sucks. I'm finding out that now, not yesterday. Um, I used three copies of Chiyu. I completely misread this. The Flare Bringer allows you to attach two basic Fire energies from your discard. Um, that is a fantastic attack because you can power up the iron hands and then make sure you have that one lightning energy. Um, and then if you get your opponent not if your opponent knocks out a Pokemon on their previous turn, you can use Mega Fire of Envy to do 140 damage. And at a pre-release, that is a big number. So Next up, we got three copies of Elekid. Um, 
with the Alakid, I was trying to do a specific strategy, and that because Alakid just does 30 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon, there is no Manaphy in this in a pre-release, well, this pre-release, so I could just attack anything. Um, you'll see why in a bit. Um, what I was going for, I had a Minior. The only time I got this out and could attack, um, because its attack does 20 damage for each um, retreat cost in your opponent's active, my opponent reduced their retreat cost to zero and I couldn't actually attack with it. Uh, so I ran one puzzle. This was probably a mistake. Um, there was a couple other things that I could run. Some of these should have definitely been left as the Age of Slash line. So that is something big. Um, didn't have any Iron Moth. Sadly, I didn't be able to get off the ability to shift into the active and get um, all energy attached to it. Um, moving on to the trainer cards. One of the biggest cards in the set is the Earthen Vessel. Being able to discard one card to get two basic energies. Sadly, you can't attach them, but that was actually a really useful card going through the de um, deck. Getting a few energies, I, as you will see, I did not actually really need it. Uh, I ran three copies of Mela. Mela is a great card. Um, you get to attach one basic fire energy from the discard to one of your Pokemon and then draw up to six. With these low HP Pokemon um, in pre-release, that was fantastic. I'm not sure how well I think it will go in proper competitive. With um, Dark Charizard currently one of the best well, one of the decks that are currently floating around. It could see play in that to get back an energy that you've lost. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, do you get one Clavel? Basically get three basic Pokemon from the deck. So that was good. Um, we do have one Rika. Um, look at the top four cards of your deck. Get two. Put two shuffled on the bottom of the deck. Um, really interesting card. I would much prefer this in a more constructed deck, um, but who knows. Uh, this is why I ran the Elicid. We have the Technical Machine Devolution, and if I had realized the Magmi worked the way it did, um, this would have been even better. So you basically de-evolve all of your opponent's Pokemon to the highest stage underneath the... Um, current version of it so this would have been perfect in several um, chances to basically go and put my opponent's um, stage one pokemon with enough damage to then take the ko on the little pokemon not the big pokemon so i never got to pull that off sadly but that is something that i am personally looking forward to trying in the future uh, we do get one youngster uh, we got one Norman from my packs. Um, draw two, and if your opponent's active is a EX, draw two more. Uh, basically just draw, it's good regardless. Uh, I had one Ultra Ball, and this is where the issue comes in. So I ran a bit too much energy. So I ran one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 fire energy, um, which would have been better if I had more fire targets. Sadly, I didn't. And then I ran 7 lightning energy. What I should have done is reduce the number of fire energies and kept some more... Um, would, would have been good having just a few more of these generic attackers. Um, but sadly, a lot of them were locked behind um, evolution lines. Now, that's always the biggest issue with the pre-releases, is that you don't always get anything good in your packs to modify the deck 
to something that's semi-competent. But that was my deck that I had. But we did get some packs for entering the event. So let's have a look at what we got. Let's start with the prize pack. And we'll finish off with the Paradox Rest packs. So it was a sanctioned event. So we do get these um, then. So we've got a Gutsy Pickaxe. Gardenia's Vigor. We've got a Tornadoes. We got the Cosmic Foil Pot Helmet. Ooh, that's a big one. We got okay. We got the Cosmic Foil Manaphy and then a non-hollow Psychic Energy. So let's move on to the Paradox Rift packs. Now I will say that when we got these additional packs for entering. I did see two really big pack, uh, two really big cards get pulled from packs. So I'm not expecting anything too much. I might be able to get something uh, like an EX or something, but nothing, none of the really high rarity stuff. But let's see. We got a Spinder, Tinker Tink, Tandem Mouse. We got a Dwebble, Simmer Sage, Norman, we got an Orthworm, Tinker Tink. That is good. That is fantastic. We got the Aegis Slash Illustration Rare and a Hollow Thievel. I don't think I've seen many of these cards, but that Aegis Slash is a fantastic looking card. I didn't count how many people got exactly what, so I don't know what's left, but um. Someone did pull the Special Illustration Golden Go, and someone pulled the Special Illustration Tulip. So they got really lucky with their pulls. But we have a Gabite here, a Minum, we've got a Dewblade, Miltank, Garbodor, Technical Machine Evolution. This is going to be a fantastic card. I will definitely be needing that. We've got a Durant, we've got a Knackley, Lipard, and a regular version of the Chi Yu. So that's how my pre release kind of went. Um, that is a fantastic start with the Aegis Slash for my uh, collections. But let's see how my Paradox Rift actually goes. But before that happens, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you all next time. See ya.